and welcome back to Triplicate, home of interesting electronics. Uh, we've got a couple of upcoming projects uh, for which it would be useful for the trusty Arduino to be able to talk to the PC. Yep, bind chair firm. And the best way of doing that is using USB. Everything uses USB to communicate with the PC. And in my experience, the best way of getting USB in and out of an embedded hardware board is using an FTDI chip. And you can buy FTDI chips already soldered to convenient little PCBs for, I don't know, a few pounds. So today we're just going to get into a little project and just establish some basic communication between the PC and the Arduino. And the more sharp-eyed among you will have already thought to yourselves, hang on, the Arduino already uses USB to communicate with the PC, that's how you program it. And indeed you can, I find out, talk to the PC using that uh, USB interface. So I have a little piece of code here which does this. Um, Serial.begin just opens the serial port for use um, by the program and serial print line prints hello world here and here just prints the time in millis. Now I know it compiles but I haven't run it yet and if we look over here we have a monitor and that will hopefully print out what the Arduino is printing. Uh, this program is sort of based on the basic blink, so it blink the LED and I will tell you whether the LED is blinking. Uh, you can take my word for it. I'm honest. Honest. So, upload and save. Let's go. Serial port temporarily busy? Okay, I'll give it that. What doesn't it like? Try that. Okay. And there we go. So that's working nicely, but here we reach a problem. The only way of using that USB link is um, the way we're using it and using it on uh, the monitor that comes with the editor, which is all right. Apparently we can send text. No, okay. So you have to type text into that box and then send it, but that's not really what we want to do. So what we need is a serial port that we can access. Uh, now here we have the UNO schematic and here we have the RX and TX going off to this second processor which just deals with the USB basically. Uh, and that is the only serial port on this particular chip. If we go to the data sheet for the processor, it says a programmable, programmable serial USART. One of. Now, we could possibly um take those two resistors out and put a switch in there so we can switch that serial port between 
um, using it for programming and using it for end use but who knows whether it would work whether we could get it to work and it would be a complete pain in the ass so what to do well the solution I've come up with is simply to upgrade to the Arduino Mega so this has for its processor the AT Mega 6560 and this has they claim uh, under peripheral features two stroke four programmable serial USARTs uh, what they mean by two stroke four I don't as yet know but I'm sure I'll find out and anyway two would be absolutely fine for us okay so here it is still in its box I haven't opened it yet so shall we have a look together okay I've cut the security tape I needed both hands to do that, so I did that off camera, and here we go. And here she comes. So, we get, thank you for supporting Arduino, another one of those. I did, as you probably noticed, buy the official one as a, a development one uh, partly because you know you're getting the the real deal a good quality you know it should work and secondly because you know it is good to support them they do do a lot of work and they've had a lot of fun on their platform so yeah and we could also get some more stickers which I'm sure I'll stick somewhere so should we connect it up instead of the old one and see if we can get it running uh, there we go well it's powered up oh and the LED is flashing I guess because it comes with the blink code in so shall we try and get the code we were running in the UNO working in the Mega I am also going to firstly put these delays down to 300 so we're expecting the Mega to flash a bit faster than it is with the, the default blink code in uh, so we need to select it it's not gonna let us go man ah there we go Omega Com 7 it seems to be connected to it so what do we need to do we need to recompile the code and save it and we need to look on the monitor and it's not doing anything there and the TX light is on okay so I unplugged the Mega from the USB and plugged it back in again and as you can see it's now working absolutely fine so that's good that was easy okay so what I thought we'd do with this is we'd attach a pot to the Arduino 
uh, and send the value of the pot to the PC display it on the PC and the pot would send it back to the Arduino uh, possibly inverted or something and we would get the built-in LED to change in brightness via PWM uh, and that would be our test so before we get into USB we'll connect the pot up and partly the reason for doing this is I haven't done the analog inputs on the Arduino yet so it's a chance to try that now uh, just trying to work out which of these is which so the yellow one will be ground according to conventional color coding not yeah there we go the supply which I'm going to use 3v3 I know it's 5 volts but I will try it initially on the 3v3 if that is the 3v3 that's 5 volts I think that's 3v3 and this will go to uh, analog in A0 which is that one yeah man so we'll move this so we can see it now if we go back to the code I've modified our code it's still blinking the LED round every 600 milliseconds and just to see how long the LED read takes I've recorded the millisecond time read the analog value recorded a millisecond time printed out the value the diff the time difference and that's it and then it'll go around and do it again in 600 milliseconds so where shall we turn the monitor on that's the old code fire it up and see what it says well it doesn't take a long time can we see that? Yeah. Okay, and that's working. And that's giving me two A D flat out. And it'll give me three F F of five volts. Okay, so far so good. Shall we connect up the USB? Actually, shall we have some generate some software at the PC end so we've got something to talk to the USB? All right, so here's a little FTDI board. So we've got a wire on ground, the orange one, a wire on the receive, the yellow one, and a wire on the transmit, the green one. And we are actually going to power the FTDI chip itself from the USB, so there's no power taken from the Arduino. It just means we can run it without the Arduino connected. And for initial test, We're just going to short the transmit and receive together and do a loopback test to the PC. Okay, so I used a jumper in the end, which uh, I'll get a far better loopback connection. 
and I have here a USB plug and I have here the device manager sorry pointing the camera at the PC screen again never makes for the best results and as you can see we have a USB serial device COM7 at the moment so if I plug this in here there we go and there's usually a light comes on there is a light come on in the corner so if I now go back to the device manager we have another USB serial port COM8 so that is the one we want COM8 remember that because I'll forget it right I write PC software using Embacadero C++ builder and yeah I use C++ I use this because I've used it for a number of years and I find it's it's easy to use intuitive and when they upgrade it they just make small changes rather than changing the whole lot like Microsoft do and these days you can get what they call a community issue which is free now I think I will produce a video in a little while on how you set up a project and how you go about creating all the objects and how you open serial ports so you can talk to the USB but in this video I really want to uh, concentrate on the Arduino end so I'll go very quickly over what I've got here uh, so here you set the serial port number and here you've got a button which opens the serial port uh, we've got a timer here which is every half second and we can quickly look at the code for these so here's the timer it just assembles a message and writes it and prints it I forgot to say down at the bottom here this big white area is what they call a memo which is just an area for writing text to and then it uh, calls USB get message the USB classes basically talks to a, the serial port that the FTDI is connected to so yeah here it, it gets a message and prints it if there's a message to get that's the timer scroll up here here's the open button which just creates the USB board opens it sets it up to the right board rate I'm using 9600 here uh, just for test purposes and that I think is all you need to know okay I shall compile and run the project by clicking that button there and up it comes now I've got the jumper that went between the two the RX and TX on the Arduino board I've pulled that off and yes I did connect it to the right pins in the end so if I open that could not open serial port right so I need to set the right serial port which was 8 was it not guys open serial port open right so it's writing a message every half a second and it's just sending a 4-bit counter number in the message so if I connect the jumper up again between those two pins we now get write and read and it reads the same message back so that's working and just to quickly run through the message format again this is something I'll uh, go into another time the first byte is the total length of the message 
The second byte is a command, that's actually a dummy, I've just put 13. This is followed by as many data bytes as we need, which is test counter, which just counts up every half second. The four bytes of that. And then I say write buffer, and the write buffer function in message buffer 6 puts a checksum in. And the checksum is just the sum of all the other bytes inverted. You can use fancy CRC checksums, but we're doing this on the desktop, so it's not likely to, to suffer from losing bytes and things, is what I'm saying. So that'll do. Right, shall we uh, jump on the other end and see if we can get the Arduino to, to talk to the FTDI chip? Right, so I have connected up, well, the pot is connected to an analog input as before, and I've connected up the USB serial board ground there and TX from the board to RX1, RX from the board to TX1. Pretty simple, so let's see what I've done to the Arduino code. Okay, so um, I've changed this round a bit to get it to work how we want. Uh, you can see if we look in the setup, uh, there's now a USB setup which simply begins serial one serial one is the serial port the USB is on and that function simply fires it up at 9600 board rate okay so if we go in our main function uh, first we check USB get message this passes the incoming um, serial input uh, and assembles it into a message and if it gets a message it prints it uh, analog write to LED built in uh, message buff 2 which is the value sent from the PC uh, that's a one byte value which controls the LED brightness by a PWM um, that's what analog write does and then we print the value out onto the monitor uh, the RX counter is then reset the RX counter is used to check whether there are still incoming messages and flag up a communications fault if there aren't okay so tick time is half a second um, and this is if you're familiar with the way I write these things um, so every 500 milliseconds it will go through this piece of code um, right T1 and T2 are now looking for a micros time uh, so we can time the time the analog read takes more accurately uh, this is just for test purposes here and we'll have a look at it when uh, when we fire it up uh, and then it prints the analog value and the time taken to read the analog okay now it assembles a message the length of the overall length of the message is 5 bytes the command is 13 which is random because we're only sending one type of message now val is read from the analog input and that's a 10 bit analog value so we shift it right to get an 8 bit and we send a, a count value as well in the, the byte 3 of the message um, for no particular reason just for debugging and then we send it and again we're timing how long it takes to send the message and then we print message just prints the message and the time it takes to send it 
and we check the counter. If the counter is unequal to zero, <coughs> excuse me, if the counter is unequal to zero, we decrement it. If it is, if it is equal to zero, we haven't received an, a read message in several write messages. So what we then do is we go over to blinking the LED slowly rather than changing its brightness with the PWM. Okay, so should we fire this up? Okay, so let's download this to the Arduino and see what happens. Right, so if we turn the monitor on and give it a bit more width, I think. So we can see it's producing an analog value of 2E4 or so at the moment, and it's taking about 100 to 120 microseconds to get the analog value, which is not at all bad. And if I turn the pot up, uh, the analog value is now 3FF and if I turn it down the analog value is 0. So if we look at the LED it is flashing slowly which means it's not receiving any messages from the PC which is not surprising because the PC application is not running. So I think now is the time to fire that up, give a quick description of that and see if we can get it to work. All right, so the Arduino is still running and it's still flashing its little LED slowly to show it's got no communications with the PC. Right, so here we're looking at the code. If we go like that, it'll compile and run. Okay, and we want to open. Just, do we remember which port? Yep, port 8. And there we go, it's reading and writing on there. And if we go back to here, uh, you may or may not be able to see with the lights and the fact they're very dim, small LEDs, the read and write LEDs are blinking on the board here. And the uh, built-in LED is sort of half lit, so if I turn the pot down, you can see it's going out, and if I turn the pot up, it's getting brighter. That's working. So if we then go back to this and put the invert output on, and now if I turn the pot up, it gets goes off and if I turn the pot down it gets brighter again right up to maximum brightness at pot down at the bottom so there we go we have basic communications between the Arduino and the PC uh, which we can incorporate in future more interesting projects so I think that's about it for this video so for now I'll sign off, um, uh, subscribe if you like the channel, um, leave a comment if you've got anything to say, thumbs up maybe, and for now it's goodbye from Triplicate, home of interesting electronics, goodbye.